Okay, folks, welcome back to another episode of Programming with Clayton. Today we're going to start a program from scratch with Rockwell's RS Logics 5000. Okay, here we are on the home page. We're just going to click File, New. At this point, it pulls up the pop up where you can pick your processor, your revision number, you can name your processor, brief description, and where you want to create your project at. Click up here, you can pick between any of the lo of the Control Logics family of processors. The processor I'm actually using today is a 1769L32E Compact Logic. Under revision, revision, this is where you have all the revisions of the firmware available with your version of RS Logics 5000. I suggest to go at the highest revision number. Each major revision has a little tweak here and there, so it never hurts to go high. We're going to go ahead and name our processor as Clayton Test. And here you could add a brief description. We're just going to call it a demo. Down here, this is where you want your program to be created at. Well, I've created a folder already. I like to have each one in its own folder. I've already created a folder named demo under me. We'll click OK. Security authority. We don't want any security authority. Security authority means that this user with this version of Factory Talk has to log in to program this processor. We don't need that. We want anybody to be able to change the program if they want to. We'll click OK. Okay, at this point it's adding everything over here on my tree it's, it's creating a blank project and there we go if you look down here at the bottom the very first thing we knew what we need to do is build our back plane right we need to add our cards build out our PLC so if you see down here we have IO configuration there's my processor there's my Ethernet port we're going to click on compact bus local right click and add new module. Here's all the possible cards Alan Bradley makes for that, that for the compact logic. Okay, so we're going to just go ahead and type in up here. I've got a IQ16 right here. Okay, go ahead and hit create. It's a 16 point DI card, 24 volt DI card. Okay, name, we're going to go ahead and name it DI1. Okay, it's in slot 1. Right here, the series and revision. We need to change that because each card has its own firmware on it. You have to look on the card to see what firmware it is. Okay, the card I have is actually major revision 3.1. So we're going to click OK. Yes. And OK. And if you see down here, now it's added that card on my bus. Okay, and actually my second card is the exact same thing. So we're going to go ahead and create it. We're going to name it DI2. It's also revision 3.1A. Okay, yes. Okay. You see, there, there it is down there. Added it down here. Okay, my third card is an IQ6 XOW4. It's actually a combo card. It's 6 point DI, 4 point DO. Go ahead and create that. I'm going to call this one combo. Uh, my combo card is uh, series B, revision 3.1. You always want to use compatible module. Uh, that way if you have to change this card out at some point you don't have to have a card with the same firmware revision you can have any firmware revision so we're going to say okay yes okay my next card is an OB16 right here 24 volt DC DO card we're going to call it DO1. 
uh, my firmware is 3.1 again B and if you see over here on the left down here it's adding our cards as we go so my next card is a OW8I which means it's isolated relay out just an isolated DO card relay output card we're going to name it DO2 and it is 3.1B again compatible and all that and you notice see how it's it's if it's incrementing slot numbers right there if we come in we could change it to whatever but it'll do it on its own it'll just keep if you add them in order you just start at the top and work your way down it'll increment the slot number on its own okay then I have an analog input card right here I have a IF4 four, four channel analog input card we're going to call it AI1 and the firmware on it is actually 2.1B on the card that I have okay and there it is and I have a analog output card I have a two channel analog output card an OF2 and we're going to call that AO1 and my firmware on it is 2.1B right there and the last card in my rack is actually a, a scanner card, a device net scanner card we're going to go ahead and create that. My major revision on my card is actually 2 we're going to call this scanner and it's in slot 8 input size 90, output size 90 uh, mine's actually revision 4, 2.4 down here we're going to go compatible keying click OK it'll pop up with that with my scanner card it'll pop up another window that lets you configure your RS networks for your scanner card we're not going to go into that right now and click OK alright at that point right there now we have our cards we have our rack laid out right here so let's go ahead and save this okay and actually we'll go to save as and we're going to save it in demo and file name is Clayton test and we'll click save I'll show you something real quick if you notice right here it's got three files in there in that folder already some of them say BAK that's a backup uh, you can set in some of your some of your fine-tuned settings on Logix 5000 you can actually set it to back up randomly on its own ever so many minutes or seconds or hours however you set it so mine's already backed up twice that's in case something goes wrong you've got a backup anyways there you go we have our rack laid out join in next week and we'll write a little piece of program we'll actually load this rack into the processor thanks again folks for joining in